My name is Rodney Cloud Hill, activist, poet, author, motivational speaker located in the DMV area from DC. Also by the way of South Carolina, Florence. Um, I love you all out there on Pill Talk podcast. Um, my words of wisdom for this week is manifest your goals into reality. All right, all right. Listen, this is Pill Talk podcast. This is your daily dose of medicine, something to get you to inspire, motivated, and Absolutely. educated on what's going on out there. So this episode right here is a special one, a little outside our box from talking with medical professionals. We wanted to bring on my good friend, Rodney Cloud Hill. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Activist, poet, a two-time author, here to talk about his newest book, Black Wash. How you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm doing amazing. I'm alive. Um, it's beautiful out there. It is beautiful. I'm doing amazing. What's up? All right. So, Rodney, let's get into you. Let's get a, first before we jump into the book. Let's get into your background. Um, what's your? How did you get started writing and and what's going on? So, uh, my background. Um, I'm a sociology major. Um. I studied sociology, got, got my degree in it. I have a military background. I was six years in the Air Force and uh, through my experiences in the Air Force, I actually experienced a lot of racism and uh, it opened me up to a mind state that I didn't have before on it. Um, I knew it existed, I always knew it existed. But when I started experiencing myself, because I was working a lot uh, alongside of a lot of white individuals in positions of power, mm -hmm. I was like, man, I have to have to make some change. So uh, prior to that, um, like I said, I'm born in born in Maryland, raised in D.C., raised in South Carolina, your state. Your um, so it's a small world out there. But uh, I had a passion for for writing. My passion came for writing, started listening to really good hip hop at one point in time, Nas, Common, Talib Kweli, Most Def, Lauryn Hill, people that actually spoke about certain things. And uh, I started like really resonating into what they were talking about. And I started writing myself. Poetry was my first avenue. Um, actually, I was rapping at one point too, but oh, everybody was bars. rapping. <laughs> yeah, had the bar. I mean, you know I have bars with poetry, so. It's uh, similar stuff. You just rapping. Now you rap. Well, poetry is rapping without the beat. That's what I'll say. So rapping is with the beat. Poetry, you can you make your own beat. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so got into that. And uh, it opened me. It brought me out to a, a different world, man. I started learning a lot with uh, the brothers and sisters I was meeting, the gods and goddesses I was meeting out there. Just put me on new thoughts, new mm -hmm. thoughts, a lot of different thoughts out there. And it brought in my mind. I, I became enlightened, became conscious. People say it all the time. Um, but definitely, definitely it opened me to, to different things. So um, throughout the years, I just knew I had to give back. So I started writing. Um, and most of my poetry is uh, about systemic racism and institutional uh, racism, mass incarceration. Now, I have love, hate poems and stuff like that as well. But most of my stuff is dealing with societal issues. But uh, for the past five years, my baby Blackwash, which we're going to get into later on in the podcast, um, this is a novel. And the novel is not, po is not poetry. It's a novel on systemic racism and oppression. But it, it is a societal flip. So I'm changing the narrative of racism. I put Black people in a position of power towards white people. So everything that they have done towards us, I'm doing it towards them in the book and it's for uh, educational purposes. And everything that I'm saying in this book is also referenced. There is no fictitious events in this book or fictitious people. Names and stuff like names, events, um, locations and stuff are made up, but the actual instances have happened and everything is referenced. There's an index in the back of the book as well. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to let you, when you're ready to get <laughs> to that part, we can definitely talk on that. So, What's up, everybody? Let me introduce myself. My name is Dr. Bartu Wilson. I'm a pharmacist that was featured in one of the most prestigious publications, 
Marquis Who's Who in 2021 as a top medical professional of the world because of my impact through medication therapy management, outreach programs, and networking. I started my own podcast, Pill Talk Podcast, to sit down and talk with other top medical professionals about their journey. Some of the topics that we cover in our conversations are their career path choice, education level needed to practice in their career field, and most importantly, how they're impacting the lives of the patients that they see daily. So, I would like for you to join me every Monday at 6 p.m. as I release new episodes so you can learn about the different medical fields from the top professionals themselves. I just want to let you know that Pill Talk Podcast is just not a podcast, it's your medicine. The daily dose you need to educate, motivate, and aspire to live at your full potential. So become an empowered leader and start to dream bigger with Pill Talk Podcast. So, I want you to go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel and support the podcast by becoming an active listener and purchasing some merchandise. Thank you. Yeah. Man, I think um, I think we're ready to dive into it, right? Because you already gave us your background on what got you to this place, right? So it took you, you said five years mm -hmm. to construct this book. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about what actually is in the book. Like, what made you start first? What made you start the book? Oh, what made me start the book again? Um, experiencing societal racism experiencing and just knowing societal racism um being educated on it formally in college and understanding um that racism is institutionalized when a lot of people talk about racism we only talk about the in your face stuff calling you a nigga calling you a cracker and stuff like that but not a lot of people talk about the 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 laws the policies that are actually racist and that are deliberately uh made to keep black and brown people um, below um, white people. And uh, it's been like this for 400, 500 years in this country. And until we actually start fixing these issues, it's gonna continue to exist. So um, understanding that and being educated on it, that was my first reason for writing a book. Mm -hmm. But when I had the idea and I can only attribute it to the creator, I can only attribute it to the universe, God, whatever you wanna call it. Um, I just had the idea to like, Flip it, yeah. flip it. It's like, how can white people understand something unless they're put in a position? So it's like, even us, even humans, it's just a natural human instinct to not care about certain things when you're not experiencing it. Yeah. Um, and that's yeah. natural. We all do it. Um, so it's like, let me see what happens if you put them in our position and you actually use facts to discuss it. So now that it's actually out, I released the book on the 18th of April, 2021. Um, when, when people start picking it up in numbers and white people start gravitating towards it in the masses, of course, I'm gonna get a lot of controversy. Of course, people are gonna start bashing it, but what can you um, say against it in actuality um, because I'm using factual events. Yeah. If I made stuff up, it would be different. But the fact that I'm using facts, you can't be mad at me. You, you got to be mad at your ancestors. You got to be mad at your people and you're in the history of America because we're not educated on it. For the first point, we're not really educated on how in-depth slavery was. Um, so when you hear about it in this death, people are gonna be like, oh, wow, they were doing this to, to us, but in, in the book is, you know, vice versa. vice versa. So, yeah. That ring light is nice. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so you talked about, you just mentioned some laws that have been used against people of color, black and mm -hmm. brown. So, and it's in the book. Mm -hmm. Would you mind going over one or two of the laws that you can think of off top that has been used to suppress people or put them in a position where they have to stay inferior? Um, redlining. Um, after slavery, 
yeah, after slavery, we were being redlined by the masses, trying to create businesses, and we weren't given that same opportunity. Um, that's a lot of people don't talk about it. So it's like when people say slavery happened so long ago, they don't go into the fact that after slavery, white people were able to create certain things and get ahead of us, but that we were put in a, a, a box where we could not have jobs, couldn't get loans. Uh, the GI Bill wasn't given to us. We were joined, we, we were in the military and they weren't even allowing us to use the GI Bill. Um, Hold on, first let's go back, right? Sorry. Oh, no problem, no problem. Because now nah, you, went, you went down and mm -hmm. started naming a lot of other mm -hmm. things that, that kept us in a position of lower class, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, the first thing you said was redlining, which is a great thing because it stopped a whole lot of generational wealth from being produced exactly. because of housing. Mm -hmm. um, if the, Let the people out there know exactly what redlining is Mm. So that they can know why you might, be able, to, you might be able to find it better than me, right? All right, now. so <laughs> all right, I'll let you know what redlining is, yeah. right? So I'm a black family, and I want to start my generational wealth by buying a purchasing my first home. Mm -hmm. So redlining is a technique that the banks use where they would literally pull out a map and draw red lines where they call certain areas and neighborhoods in the community, neighborhoods in the city inferior mm -hmm. and would keep the blacks, browns and people that they felt like wasn't a uh, superior in those neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. So those areas would have, um, the housing would be cheaper. Mm -hmm. The school system would be poor. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, and there will be hospitals, no hospital, like mm -hmm. the businesses won't be able to produce. And then you have the houses that went up with equity and value because they was on the other side of the red line. And that's how they kept us from building generational wealth. Mm -hmm. So imagine your mother or some of you guys' mother or grandparents um, had the ability to buy a house that was on the other side of that mm -hmm. red line, um, which have, which the banks would give better loans to, mm -hmm. right? Because that's another thing. So even if the two houses are the same, $100,000, and they give the white family a loan for the house at 2.5%, mm -hmm. but give the black family a loan for the house at 5%, five or 8%. Yeah. So it's going to take you two to three times longer mm -hmm. to pay off the house. Even if the appreciation moves at the same rate, mm -hmm. you still won't be able to get your money out because exactly. you're still so deep in debt. Mm -hmm. So... Redlining was a way, again, mm -hmm. uh, to keep Blacks, Brown, mm -hmm. isolated in a small area mm -hmm. and then giving them subprime mortgage loans that made mm -hmm. them have to pay on these things for forever. So Sorry. that's a way how the system mm -hmm. kept people from creating general. And I say generational wealth because imagine if your grandmother paid for that house or paid that house mm -hmm. off, right? And everyone, as you can see, um, inflation and appreciation. So if it cost your grandmother 100000 for that house in 1960, at this point in time, let's say it was in D.C., because that's where we are currently located at right now. So if she would have bought a duplex in D.C. for $100,000, 1960, that same duplex would be worth millions. millions. At least one. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to just say yeah. one million. Yeah. So... If you were inherit, if you got to inherit that house, you just came into mm -hmm. one million dollars of generational wealth that you can either pass along mm -hmm. or use that wealth to create mm -hmm. another avenue so that the next generation behind you could have wealth too. And that's what a lot of white people had access to, and a lot of black people were kept out. So, yeah, the book discusses everything all that into detail um, and much more, definitely, so. What's up everyone? Let me introduce myself. My name is Dr. Bartu Wilson and I'm gonna tell you my favorite model, bigger dreams, less worries. And I'm gonna tell you why. Because I can recall starting my journey to pursue my childhood dream to become a pharmacist. It wasn't an easy one. I had to overcome naysayers, rejection, 
self doubt because I didn't get accepted to pharmacy school until my third time applying. I had a big dream and I wouldn't allow anything to stop me from achieving it. I took every loss that came my way and I took that loss and turned it into a lesson. During those times of rejection, I took the time to sit down and figure out what was I doing wrong and what would make me an ideal candidate for the next time I apply for pharmacy school. I achieved my dream job and I'm featured on one of the most prestigious publications out, Marquise Who's Who in 2021 as a top medical professional in the world because I didn't allow my worries to stop me. So my words of wisdom to anyone listening out right now is, it's bigger dreams, less worries. So join me each and every week, Monday at 6 p.m. on Pill Talk Podcast to start to dream bigger. Pill Talk Podcast is not just your regular podcast, it's your medicine. The daily dose you need to educate, motivate, and inspire to live at your full potential. So, go ahead and start to dream bigger with Pill Talk Podcast. And while I got your attention, make sure you go to my YouTube channel, subscribe, and become a supporter by being an active listener. And if you would like, get you a t-shirt, Bigger Dreams, Less Work. Man, um, so some of the things that went on in the book. Can you describe one of the events that happened in the book so that if someone's watching this, they'd be like, yo, I got to read this now because I want to see how it feels and how to understand it on the reverse <clears throat> side. So I what's think, in the uh, there's a term that a lot of people don't know um, and it's situations that have affected our ancestors. So um, when Black people started running away from their slave masters um, in large numbers, during the 1700s to 1800s, white scientists actually gave black people a term named drapetomania, literally. And it means um, that they were maniacs of, uh, basically they tried to call them crazy for running away. Mm. And it's so, it's so like perplexing. They tried to label them mentally ill for running away from their captivity. Basically, they were putting it in a, a label saying, you are crazy for wanting to run away from what we were given to you. We were doing for you. So it's like white people had in that time period, yeah. um, they had such a superior consciousness where they thought it was crazy for black people to want, in, want to escape their own captivity. That's, have you heard of that term? I have Honestly, not. Honestly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and that's something I learned from uh, post-traumatic slave syndrome. That's the name of the book uh, by Dr. Joy DeGroy. Um, I think I'm saying her name right. Beautiful, beautiful mind. Um, was a woman who wrote the book. Um, yeah, so just stuff like that, where they, they thought of themselves so much um, just superior to us and us so much inferior, where they, everything, I don't even know how to describe it, man. It's just so, it's just so sad and just gets me so mad at times as well. But the emotions, you gotta leave them alone. And you just have to create something. You just gotta create something, um, but yeah, that's one thing. Um, what else? What else? What else can we talk about? That that's a talking point. So everything's flipped around in the book. I have from four hundred years ago, five hundred years ago to to right now. So I'm talking about Christopher Columbus as a black man. Talking about uh, Harriet Tubman. Talking about uh, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X all these people dealing with these same situations, but flipped on the opposite side. So Martin Luther King is now a white man fighting for their freedom. Um, Malcolm X is now a white man fighting for their freedom. Huey P. Newton, Bobby Sill, same thing. A shot of Shakur is in the book. Um, same thing, just fighting for their freedom. Um, and the opposition is us. And as a black person, you're gonna read the book and you're gonna be like, 
well, we know this is wrong because we lived through it. Mm -hmm. So it's like, bro, <laughs> we're putting them through the same thing that they put us through. Some of us, again, I want I want us to be empowered by this. Well, I want I want African Americans, Africans, anybody from the African diaspora, um, to be empowered from it, being put in that same position of authority. Um, but I also want us to know, like, I didn't create this book to enact revenge on anybody. It's not about that. It's purely educational purposes, and it's purely uh, just educational stuff. Again, nothing's fiction, so everything's referenced in the book. And there's an index in the book as well where it's going to have the transpiring words. So if, for example, uh, Christopher Columbus name in the book is Cha-Cha Colombo, his transpire word in the index is going to be that name. And certain laws and stuff are going to be the exact same. Places are going to be the exact same as well. So um, it's definitely a lot of information. It's over 200 pages. The book, it's a book. It's a novel. Um, and y'all are going to enjoy it. Those who support are going to enjoy it. It's going to be a beautiful thing. Um, so yeah. I got another thing. You know, right now, what's going on in society is, um, what's been happening for years, is the police is um, killing young black yeah. men and women. Absolutely. Um, women. At a high rate. Mm -hmm. Is that a topic that you discuss or touch on in your book? Absolutely. And if so, can you talk about that? Absolutely. So the reversal of Trayvon Martin's in my book, the reversal of uh, Michael Brown, Sandra Bland, um, she's in my book. Um, Philando Castile's in my book. Uh, Tamir Rice is in my book. Um, there's the reversal of a lot of Black people who have suffered um, injustice, by the hands of the people who are supposed to be keeping us, us safe is in my book, Police. Um, and my psychology on that, my understanding on that and my perspective on that is uh, that I feel like white people have, who have that ideology, um, they really view us like insects. So mm -hmm. what I mean by that is if someone sees an insect and it's by you, you might kill it without like even thinking about it. You just kill it. You just kill it to get rid of it. It's life. It is something that's living and breathing. It is life. It is life. We know it's life. It's not a human, but it is life. Therefore, when Black people are in certain positions where there's certain things that might be going on, Trayvon Martin, walking in the neighborhood that they say he didn't belong in, but it was his uh, aunt's and uncle's neighborhood. Um, they see him and they automatically view it as a threat and they gotta get rid of it. And that's, that's the only thing that clicks with me because on the flip side, you see the videos and you hear about it on the news and read about it where white people do worse things than what black people do. And they walk away alive. They get tased maybe or walk away from it completely alive. And sometimes the white people even kill the cops because they let them. They 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 didn't uh, apply the same force that they would have done for a black person and the, and the white culprit ended up killing the cop. It was a video I watched that uh, you might have seen it. It was a police stop, it was a traffic stop on one of the I-95 somewhere and um, Two police officers approached a white guy and they were talking nice to him and he was just being aggressive, started fighting them, grabbed their gun, one of their pistols from their belt and ended up shooting both of the cops. It's like, wow. that's crazy. And Damn. all they had to do is tase them, shoot them. First and foremost, if they're going to treat them the exact same way they treat us. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's... The, the perspective needs to be changed here in America. Um, they all, they have always painted black people as the aggressors, as committing violence. This goes, this paint, this picture has been painted from slavery to the now, even when, even when black people weren't committing anywhere near as much as crime as we do now, even though we still don't commit as much crime as white people do in America. But we would never see that on the news because they make it seem like we do. 
but even when we were just completely peaceful, when we were scared of white people, because there was a time period when we were scared of white people, they still painted us as violent, as criminals, as savages, as monsters, as beasts. So if you, if you create that ideology within the people and it's passed on from generation to generation, then it's like, yeah, it's just how some people view us. And it has to change. And books like this and podcasts like this, and, and it's going to take very strong individuals to get that out there where people can see us for what we really are. And we have to talk about it. In America has tried their hardest on avoiding the racism talk. We, we aren't educated about it in school at all. No, so. that is one of the things, um, you know, we talk about black history. Yeah. Black history is a focal point yeah. one month out of the year. And we all know it's February, black history month. But outside of that month, it's not that big of a focal point. Yeah. And then within that month, we have our superstars that we highlight more year in. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> there shouldn't be a Black History Month. Oh. Yeah, it's like the Black History Month isn't shouldn't be a Black History Month. I see what you're saying. It should be yeah. something that is taught regularly. It shouldn't yeah. be one month yeah. when you focus on it. Because as Black people, we yeah. know that we have contributed so much to America, America in, the in the world but also the world as a whole. Like Washington, D.C. If you want to do some research, you can look at Washington, D.C. and see who was the black man that actually was the architect. Benjamin Banneker. What? There yep. you go. Benjamin Banneker. That really put the whole yep. city together. Yep. Um, another one of the things I want to discuss with you, I want to ask you about is um, in the book, is reverse racism. Mm. Do you even uh, talk a little bit about how, when the roles are reversed, the people um, feel or act, or do you give any sense of their emotions or one on what, where, and what they stand on? Yeah. So in the book, it's gonna be uh, the exact same as in reality. So you're gonna have the people with victim mindsets. You're gonna have the people who. Uh, are revolutionaries you're going to have the people who are stuck who understand uh that there is a system of uh racism that's fighting against them or are trying to force them into this box you're going to have all all types of people but again every event is or every person um in the book is based on a true character therefore i can't really go out outside of their roles and what they uh what they did in, in society in real life. But uh, yeah, they, it's, it's a broad a range of emotions. Mm -hmm. The first two chapters are, to me, I love the first two chapters. I love the whole book, of course, but the, the first two chapters is big on slavery. So, so it's gonna be a chrono chronological like time frame from like slavery, well, po prior to slavery, slavery, Jim Crow era, civil rights era in present day uh, society. Um, however, in the book, it's gonna be named different. So yeah. everything like Jim Crow is called Jimna Raven, um, <laughs> a different bird, but Jimna is an African name. Um, and that's another thing, so I didn't talk on that. So here in America, most black people have European names because we were colonized by Europe. We were colonized by white people. So we were given the, the names of our slave masters. In the book, it's the opposite. So most of the white people have African names because they are colonized by Africa. So we literally went, the, the nations that are in the book, I, I know I have like Nigeria, Ghana, and some other nations went into Europe and they colonized Europe and brought slaves back and the land is now is named Shamerica so <laughs> it's a little touch on a little play on words of course something simple but um, I want people to know what I'm talking about definitely and not thinking too hard and if you got to use the index you got to use the index and there's a lot of times where people are going to have to use the index to figure out what, what I'm talking about 
but for the most part, some things should click. Okay. Yeah. But uh, to your point, there's there's a broad range of emotions that's going to be in, involved in the book. You might hate reading passages. You might get sad, very sad reading passages. Um, I already had somebody cry, like said they read some of the book and they definitely broke down in tears. And this is a black person because they didn't, they have never heard something described to in that measure before. Mm -hmm. and they didn't know certain things were going on. Like in school, again, we, we didn't, we weren't taught that we were being skinned alive and castrated. All we were taught, like we were hung, lynched, which is hung, uh, beaten by a whip. Um, what's the worst we were taught in like elementary school? Um, that was about it. It's like yeah, being yeah. slave whipped and hung and beat up and burned, like and burnt at this. So we were being burnt at the stake. We were being castrated. They were stepping on our babies. They were cutting open women who were pregnant and killing their babies and just doing like horrific things to our people. Um, they were using kids as furniture in households. It's like mm -hmm. they're literally they using that. kids as furniture in households. Um, and there was a, there's a saying that if you put your, there was a saying back in the day, of course, if you put your feet on a black person's body, it would heal you from illnesses. So that's in my book. And that's something that a lot of people don't talk about. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot. So people are going to be emotional. Again, a lot of people are going to get mad. Um, but controversy is a good thing. And again, everything's fact checked. So I want people to have those emotions. I want people to discuss it. I want people to, to feel, but I don't want people to commit violence on this. I don't want people to get mad enough to commit violence. We just need to educate and we need to talk about what's going on. We need to talk about it so we can heal from it. We got to move past it. Yeah. And that's what the last chapter is about healing. It's, a, it's, it's going to be, of course, the black people in position of power, reaching their hand down to white people um, because that is what's in the book. So like you said, right, this is a conversational starter. That's what this book is. I feel like what you're coming from with this yeah. is an eye opener, yeah. a conversation starter, yeah. right? Um, can you give us your Instagram, Facebook website so that yeah. people can reach out to you and personally able to ask you questions yes so that you can answer it and yes. be able to order the book yes so uh rodneycloudhill.com is my website you can order the book on that website it's also on amazon and barnes and noble in goodreads so if you google black watch the untold stories of reverse racism it will show up places my social media is rodney cloud hill everywhere instagram of course is combined twitter is combined Facebook is spaced out, but uh, you can ask me anything. I, I, enjoy, I enjoy talking about these topics. I think we need to be informed about these topics and we definitely need to educate others about these topics as well. And uh, yeah, so that, that those are my, my links, my shameless plug, <laughs> as what they call it, rodneycloudhill.com and it's, it's also on Kindle, so it's on ebook uh, for you Kindle readers, you tablet readers. Uh, you don't have to get the paperback. It's on that, and the audio book is coming soon. That's that's another thing. I'm getting all it's in the works. It's already being made. Shout out to Goddess who's doing that. That's a, her name that she gave me. So, yep. That's what's up. That's yeah. what's up. This was a great great thank you, thank episode. You. Um, Pill Talk Podcast is your medicine, your daily dose. We just educated you on Black Wash, uh, author Rodney Cloud Hill, multiple author. This is his news book yeah. that you got to go out there and get, get this education, people. Please go to his Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, website, all else. Just hit him up just to let mm -hmm. him know that, hey, let's, let's have a conversation. Let's thank start you, the conversation. You. Thank you. Love you all.